What's up guys, Kito here. Um, yesterday I had a conversation with someone about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and they asked me the question, how long does it take you to learn and apply a new move? And I said, I can learn it once. If you show me something once or I see it once, I can do it straight away in live training. And they were a little bit dumbfounded by this because it takes them multiple repetitions of practicing something before they, uh, before they can uh, apply it in live training. Now there's a, there's a couple reasons why. And when I first started, it wasn't easy for me to do that. Like I couldn't do this when I first started. But the approach I took, which is declarative learning, made it a lot easier in the long run for me to like adapt to new uh, techniques and just add new things to my game. Um, I would to to explain this. I'm going to have to explain the two different types of learning. Okay, uh, you've got your procedural learning. Okay, or your procedural memory, or your declarative learning, declarative memory. Okay. Um, to explain, explain a little bit about this, procedural memory is like muscle memory, okay? It's actions on a subconscious level, techniques, movements, and stuff like that, okay? So, muscle memory is something that you do subconsciously, okay? So, for example, running is muscle memory. Jumping is muscle memory. Uh, when you're texting uh, people on phones, is muscle memory, okay? Now... Muscle memory is great when you're in the moment, but it doesn't translate outside of the moment, okay? And what I mean by that is, for example, we can jump here on Earth, okay? But if you're out there in zero gravity and someone told you to jump, your body wouldn't even react appropriately because it's on a subconscious level, you need that gravity pulling you down to be able to perform a jump, okay? If you don't have that gravity, the body's going to change completely and it's not going to even work. Now, this applies to a lot of techniques that you learn. If you learn a certain technique, that is uh, like a certain guard pass, and then something changes in, in, in that environment, that guard pass is not going to work, and your body may even not, uh, not even attempt it because it just doesn't feel right, okay? So it's, uh, it's great for things that never change. Like if you're on, a, on an assembly line and you want to do the same action over and over again, it's fantastic, the best form, okay? For driving, it's great and stuff like that, but for anything that changes, anything that evolves and adapts in the moment, I don't think it's a really good idea from because you need to be able to adapt. And the thing is with muscle memory, it takes four to 500 repetitions to create muscle memory, okay? Now, muscle memory is like a neurological pathway that every time you repeat that movement, it solidifies, okay? Which I'm gonna explain in a second. Now, the good thing about that is it's not too hard to create. It takes a lot of time, but 500 repetitions or something, you know, you can do that in a day, okay? But to change muscle memory or deviate from it is where it becomes difficult. To change it takes about four to 5,000 repetitions. So you can see it's about 10 times harder or it takes 10 times more repetitions to change it. It's going to take a long time. So if you're learning a technique that you need to change or the game's evolved and you need to change that, it's going to take a long time to do that. Okay. Now, if we look at the way your brain sort of... with uh, Okay, that doesn't work. Okay. The way your brain encodes and stores information in your procedural memory, okay? If you imagine techniques in jiu-jitsu or football or whatnot, whatever you do, it'll end up doing like this. So you go to class, you learn three techniques on average over a class, and you times that by, uh, say you do 10 classes per week. That's 30 techniques. Times that by a month, uh, that's, you know, like 120, okay? You times that by a year, a bit, uh, you know, the, the, the sum keeps going on. So you imagine that many movements, how many do you actually remember? And I can guarantee you learning like that, you may remember four or five percent of that because it's a lot and your brain just does not absorb that much long-term information, which is something I explain when uh, I talk about memory retention, but that's that's for another video, okay? So what happens is you get this. So you learn a guard pass here, a sweep here, side control escape here, a mount here, and it starts looking like this. It looks like a dot-to-dot -dot drawing, okay? Now, if you want to be a little bit smarter about it, you can do it this way, where I've shown this diagram here. So you start here, it's in stand-up, okay? You learn a takedown, you drill it, so it becomes muscle memory, okay? Here, you learn that here, okay? And then we get to this spot here. And now you've taken them down, and maybe you want to pass to side control, maybe you want to pass to mount, or maybe you want to go north-south. Either one of those, You've got submissions off here, so we drill those submissions. Now, you finish, okay? So there's multiple different angles, and it links together like this. Now, the problem with this is it takes a long time. For every one of those branches, is 500. 500 techniques, okay? 
and then you times that by the amount of different positions there are in jiu-jitsu and how much it evolves and you keep doing that and then you have to, maybe you have to change this and make a different one because, you know, whatever move that is doesn't work anymore. Maybe the, the rules have changed. So you times that by this and blah, 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 and you end up getting this. Now, if I can use, if I draw something up to explain a little bit more for you guys, make it a little bit easier to understand, is here. So we start at this position here. We learn that technique, okay, one technique here, that's a takedown. And now we've got a guard pass, a guard pass, sorry, uh, a mount, uh, pass us north-south, and then we go here, different submissions, and there could be multiple ones of that, like this, okay. This is just one example. Now, your not, neurological pathways have linked together, so you've made like a mind map. But the biggest problem lies in these spaces here, okay. In between these movements because these are neurological pathways they connect to one another like train lines but you can't switch it up and go through them you can do this you can connect them like this through doing more muscle memory okay like repetition training to go in between them but this space here which is what I call the scramble in jiu-jitsu is one of the most important things and that's where muscle memory just does not apply to that area okay Scrambles is like something that Marcelo Garcia is unbelievable scrambles. Ken Cornelius, uh, Leandro Lowe, those guys are uh, Bushesha, unbelievable at scrambles. And to learn how to like react in a scramble comes from your declarative memory, okay? And it comes from your ability to train in a chaos, like an environment of chaos and thrive in that, okay? Now, you will not get that through repetition training. It just doesn't happen. It can be muscle memory. Like the muscle memory is fantastic, but I think the muscle memory is fantastic more for things like balancing and stuff like that. If you take this route and you get like good at like balancing when you're in like bad positions and your muscle memory start just recognizing what happens when someone tilts you back and how to fire to sort of keep your balance left and right, that's great. But a declarative way is much more important in my eyes. Okay, so declarative is explicit memory, okay? Conscious memories that can be recalled at any time. If I asked you what your phone number was and you can say 0423 blah blah blah, that's declarative. If I ask you what you did yesterday and you can tell me, that's declarative. Okay, remember, these are muscle memory. Okay, it's nothing you can recall. It's just in the moment, your body will react appropriately as to what, how you've drilled it. Okay, or how you practiced. Declarative concepts, ideas, philosophies. If you are a big fan of Bruce Lee, that's all he taught. If you look at his. Uh, his toe of uh, Jeet Kune Do and stuff like that. He talks about being water, their philosophies, their ideas. He didn't like strict structures, he didn't like styles. He liked you to express yourself. Okay, and any like big time artist, is a, that's what you should do. If you want to get ahead of the crowd, you can't follow the crowd. Okay, because you only get as far as the crowd. You've got to look outside the box and do things your own way. Okay, translatable into all areas of life. Of course, because of ideas and concepts, you can translate into every area. The stuff that I applied in jiu-jitsu that got me really good at jiu-jitsu and got my black belt in four years were actually business concepts that I learned of uh, one of my mentors, Danny Boyer, and I applied it into jiu-jitsu, you know, and vice versa, they can go to other areas. I've used that in football at the moment and stuff like that in the coach. So, concepts, ideas, philosophies. Now, what happens is when you store information in the brain like this, and this is the reason why some people can, can, uh, can learn moves straight away, is because... Your brain, the head neuroscientist was saying the other day, one of the head neuro, uh, neuroscientists was saying that your brain memory is like a scaffolding system, okay? They used to think it was like a computer that the more information you had, the, uh, the less room there was to learn new information, but it's actually different. It's like a scaffolding system, and the more information you have, the bigger your scaffold. The bigger your scaffold, the easier it is to apply new information onto those parts because you have such a good fundamental understanding of it. But to get that, you have to learn through trial and error. And the only way you learn through trial and error to innovate, to express yourself, is with declarative learning, ideas and concepts, because it allows you to learn and practice yourself to be able to uh, learn through trial and error. Now, what happens is your, your brain's memory starts looking like this. Okay, I'll use a different color. It starts... I'll wipe this off. <laughs> Sorry. It'll start looking like this, okay? So you, you'll start here and you go, okay, I'm gonna try and pass this guard here, okay, that doesn't work. I'm gonna try and go around this way, okay, that didn't work. I'm gonna try and go that way, no, that didn't work, okay? Uh, okay, this way worked. Now you found one way it works, but what happened is you figured out 
that this way doesn't work, this way doesn't work, this way doesn't work, or even this way doesn't work through trial and error, through your own experiences. So you know why they don't work. But maybe they do work. Maybe they work in certain times. So you start practicing from here and you go across here and do that. And then suddenly we're down here and maybe, oh, this one worked. Oh, how come this one worked this way, but this one didn't work that way? Oh, because of this, at this time, this works. And this time, it doesn't work. So you change the timing, you learn, you adapt. But what you start developing here is you start developing like a scaffolding system here. So you keep going on and on and it starts looking a lot like this. And if you've seen a scaffolding system, you can you would understand what I'm saying here. And it goes on and on and on and you end up getting this 3D looking scaffolding system here, okay? And what happens is the more information you know, the bigger your scaffold, the easier it is to apply new information. Then when someone says to you, hey Kit, I've got this new technique and when I have a look at it and they show me, they go, I practice it. And I say, no, it's all right, I've seen it, now I understand. Because I have a fundamental understanding of, let's say, over here, psych, my psych control is really good and he shows me a psych control scope. So, oh, yeah, cool. Okay, I can add that straight here. I can do it straight away when I'm live. And then maybe someone else shows me a different move. It might be a submission from mount. My mount section's over here. And then I go, oh, yeah, cool. That fits right in here. Okay, I'll add that into that. And there we go. So I've got more information. So you can see how it becomes a lot easier to implement into your game already. Okay, and obviously your scaffolding system would be a, a million times bigger than this. There'd be millions of bits of information, billions of bits of information. So whatever you have a fundamental understanding of, you're going to be able to apply really easily because remember it's declarative memory. You can recall that at any time. You can think about it. Someone says it, you can go, oh, you can you can put that image in your head and recreate that situation and add it to it without even doing it. But here, you, remember, you can't recall that. That's only muscle memory. Okay, so you have to be in the environment. You have to look at it. You have to practice it and practice it and practice it while someone's watching you and critiquing you and telling you how to do it. And then eventually it becomes muscle memory and it just fires. Okay, but the problem is there's no, there's no like strategy, there's no like intellectual uh, like warfare with that kind of stuff. It's just movements, it's getting fit, it's doing hard movements, it's imposing your will. Where this is a lot more strategic and it's a lot more, you know, playing that cat and mouse, thinking about, you know, uh, psychological warfare and really using your mind. And that's where you train, you know, there's one way to train your mind become unbelievable problem solving and all that kind of stuff. And then there's the other way of training your body, okay? Now you can, like I said, I think there's really good parts in this you should use, like balancing and stuff like that, movement. But I think this is by far the more powerful way to go about things. It is definitely harder to start because remember you start with no scaffolding, okay? So you have to start from the start. You have to throw yourself in the deep end and you are gonna get fucked up. But you're gonna learn, you're gonna learn. You keep practicing, you get better and better. And before you know it, by the end game, you know, your scaffolding gets bigger, it becomes easier and easier as you go on. Where this way never changes. You're gonna get a quick, you know, a quick um, short-term memory boost, uh, memory spike from techniques that you're just practicing, create muscle memory easily. But in the long run, this is by far more powerful. And that's the difference between becoming a world-class competitor in four years and becoming a world-class competitor in 14. So, hope you like my video. I'm going to do a lot more of these uh, on that, especially because my knee's like jacked at the moment. I can't do any techniques. So, what I can do is the psychological part of it, with, which is, in my opinion, is the most like, important thing. So, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, leave a comment and uh, like and share this video. And I uh, hope to hear from you soon.